today I'm here with a fresh book review. It's not something I normally do on this channel, um, or I haven't done so far, but I just finished this book and I haven't been able to stop thinking about it since I finished it. So I thought I would talk to you a little bit about it. And that book is Pestilence. That's right. The first book in the Four Horsemen series by Laura Thalassa. Thalassa? I'm sorry, Laura. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. And the series is a set of post-apocalyptic -apoc 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 romance stories. Now, you might think Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, how on earth can you make that into a romance? which is pretty much what I thought. But I'd heard so much about this book from Maggie at Maggie's Books and Stuff, I'll link her channel, that I just thought, you know what, I have to check this out. I have to see how this works. And it does, it really works. But I have not been able to stop thinking about this book since I finished it. And it made me feel things and not in the sort of all oh, the gooey gooey romance ways of feeling things. So I will just read you the blurb of Pestilence, which is the first book in the Four Horsemen series. They came to Earth. Pestilence, war, famine, death. Four horsemen riding their screaming steeds, racing to the corners of the world. Four horsemen with the power to destroy all of humanity. They came to Earth and they came to end us all. When Pestilence comes for Sarah Burns' town, one thing is certain. Everyone she knows and loves is marked for death. Unless, of course, the angelic-looking horseman is stopped, which is exactly what Sa Sarah has in mind when she shoots the unholy beast off his steed. Too bad no one told her Pestilence can't be killed. Now the horseman, very much alive and very pissed off, has taken her prisoner, and he's eager to make her suffer. Only the longer she's with him, the more uncertain she is about his true feelings towards her, and hers towards him. And now, well, Sarah might still be able to save the world, but in order to do so, she'll have to sacrifice her heart in the process. So, that was the blurb. And, and pretty much, you go in, it's... We have a little bit of background, five years prior, the horsemen arrived, technology sort of failed, planes fell from the sky, but then nothing else seemed to happen. And then suddenly pestilence reappeared because the horseman vanished and then pestilence reappeared. And wherever he rode, there were these outbreaks of messianic plague, I think they call it in the book. Please correct me if I'm wrong. And basically there is no survival rate for this thing. Anybody who gets it will die. And it's not spread in sort of contact with other people. He can just pass by your city, your town, kilometers away, and you will get it. So people are evacuating their towns when they hear that he is on the way, uh, on the highways to their city or whatever. And um, we start in Canada with Sarah Burns and she pulls the short straw and is left behind to finish him off in quite a gruesome manner. I won't go into details, but if you are squeamish, maybe not this book. He then regenerates or whatever it is he does and he doesn't kill her. She thinks, oh, this is it. I'm going to get the plague or he's just going to kill me outright because I failed. But he doesn't do that. He intends to make her suffer. So he drags her, literally drags her along after him and his horse on his progress throughout Canada. And at times, this book is heartbreaking. When you read. He goes into these houses. He doesn't care if people are still in the houses. He just goes in, uses it as shelter, infects them in the process, and then moves on. However, Sarah is a first responder, so she cannot just leave these people to suffer alone, to die alone. And so she cares for them and 
makes their passing easier, which he doesn't understand. He doesn't understand why she's doing this. Um, and he doesn't like watching the effects of his own plague. But anyway, as this carries on, there are several instances of her caring for families. And as they progress, their relationship changes from one of absolute hatred for each other to something more muted to interest because he is apparently very, very gorgeous. And then obviously it is a love story. So there is a romance there and it is very well done. The way it builds the internal monologue of Sarah and what she's thinking, because this guy has come to kill off her kind. He is killing everybody he comes into contact with uh, or passes by. So it's very hard for her to wrangle her feelings for him. But as well as that, we as well as, and as well as the growing romance story, we see aspects of human nature which are painful at times, which make you proud at times, um, in the different ways that people react to pestilence's presence. And yeah, it just, I think had I read this book five or more years ago, it wouldn't have affected me so much. But of course, with what happened in 2020 and the years after with COVID, it, it hit home a bit more. And then also at the end of the book, Obviously, we know it's a series. We know there are four horsemen of the apocalypse. This is not going to be spoilery. But at the end of the book, some time has passed. And suddenly he says, my brother has awoken. And the second horseman of the apocalypse is war. And as I was reading the book as well, it just hit me with what is going on in the world, with what has happened with COVID, what is going on currently in various regions of the world, with the climate crisis, because of course the third book in the series, the third man of the apocalypse is famine. And I am not a religious person. And actually I was very thankful because I was a bit skeptical going into this that it would be super religious. It is not. Of course, God and other gods, uh, other religions are mentioned, but it is not a, it is not a religious book at all. So if you're a bit mm, unsure about that, don't worry. It goes into very little detail about God or gods or religion. So if that's something you're not keen on reading, don't worry, there's not too much of that in here. But yeah, there was there was also one point in the book where some where she asked him where they had been for five years. They arrived, sort of knocked out the technology um, and disappeared. And he said, I'm not quoting exactly, I'm paraphrasing, that he they were resting to see if they had changed, if the, the their arrival had sparked them into action to change. And there was still yet time for humanity to change. And I don't know why, but that really stuck with me, like I say, especially with what has happened in the world, what is happening currently in the world. And the fact that if we do not do things in terms of the climate change, things are going to continue to happen. So, yeah, I, I was up all that night. I finished the book about 10 o'clock at night and I, I couldn't sleep because all these thoughts were going around my head. And... I don't know, maybe I'm just very fragile, but it struck a chord with the times that we live in. And it didn't feel like a post-apocalyptic book. It felt like a contemporary book. 
if I'm being completely honest. Obviously, we are not in that apocalyptic situation where we have no technology and communication systems have been shut down. But it just it just got me thinking and I am not one to sit and watch the news. I keep up to date with the headlines. I know what I need to know and then I shut it off because if I don't do that, I will suffer. I'm a bit of an empathetic sponge and I soak up all the emotions of what I see, what is going on around me and I can really internalise that. So I get the information I need but I try not to dwell on these things. So if you are like me and you are struggling with things that are happening in the world, perhaps don't read this series just yet. I want to read the next books in this. I want to know how it plays out but I don't think I will be reading the second book, which is War, right now. I need a break from this one. I need to digest it. And then, depending on what is happening in the world, I will see if I can read the next book. But if you're not as fragile as me, <laughs> I would highly recommend it. It is beautifully written. I do apologise, the sun has just come out from behind a cloud. Uh, it is beautifully written, it pulled me along through the somewhat disturbing descriptions at times, but I was pulled on by the story, by the romance, which was so beautifully done. Of course we have a virgin male main character, I mean who's gonna want to hook up with somebody who gives you the plague? Um, <laughs> So obviously he is a has never had a lover before and he at the beginning of the book hates humankind so it's kind of understandable but the way it builds and the way it's written is very well done so if you do like romance then do give that a go but bear in mind it will make you feel things and not just on the romance side of the story. So there you go, that was my review of Pestilence by Laura Talassa and yeah, pick it up, see what you think.